Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to the ESAP Special Alloys live event. My name is Clemente Tallarico and with me as the presenter, we have Mr. Peter Stones and Mr. Per Oke Bjornstedt as well for technical support. I'm pleased to announce here the third presentation of ESAP Specialty Alloys, which will happen every third Friday of the month at 14.30 European time via, via team live event. The third presentation of the program will be the one starting in a few seconds with the title, What are Supraustenitic Filler Metals? We are very happy to answer your questions at the end of the presentation, which you can type in in the Q&A box you will find on the top right of your screen. We intend to present on about 30 minutes and take 10 minutes more for answering your questions. So, and now let us start the show with Peter presenting the event. Enjoy. Thank you, Clemente. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, to be able to uh, present uh, another topic in our, in our series. As Clemente said, uh, this is planned to last for approximately 30 minutes, so it's not an in-depth uh, review of the subject, but hopefully it'll give you a taster about these, these weird and wonderful things called super Um The slides will be available should you send either myself or Clemente a request, then we're more than happy to share the slides with you. So. You don't have to take copious notes or, or scribble something down if you're interested in finding out more information. Both mine and Clemente's contact details uh, will be on the last slide. So uh, please. So uh, as a summary of what I want to present today, we're talking about these this strange category called super austenitics. What are they? Uh, what are the characteristics? And obviously we're a welding company, so how do we weld them? There are some very special uh, rules that you need to adhere to to be able to weld these grades successfully. They are a little bit special and they need treating so. And uh, a little bit further, we'll talk about what these grades are used for. So what are the, what are the properties that they've got and how do we take benefit of them uh, for some special applications? So, what does a super austenitic steel look like? Well, the picture on the top left hand side is what we would call a standard austenitic, something like a 316L, a 308L, 300 series stainless steels. What we see here is an austenitic matrix. So, the white is, is austenite. And the black lines are ferrite. So the content of ferrite in a standard austenitic it can be anything up to say 15%. Even though it's got up to 15% ferrite in it, we still call it an austenitic. Okay. The difference between an, a standard austenitic and a super austenitic is the super austenitics have zero ferrite. To look at the difference, the, this is a ferritic structure. We've got base metal and weld metal here, but it's a ferritic structure, so it, it's 100% ferrite. There's no austenite in there. Something like a 400 series stainless steel, 430 LMB, as an example. Duplexes, which was the subject of last month's uh, presentation, duplex uh, structure is a mixture, a 50 50 mixture of austenite and ferrite. So again, we've got uh, base metal and weld metal, but it's a, it's a nice 50-50 mixture of austenite and ferrite. So just uh, containing ferrite um, it, it, uh, uh, or just containing the various alloys that go to make up uh, these grades is, is not the only reason or is not the reason why they have the properties that they do. It's the way that they're manufactured as well. So we're concentrating here on these super austenitics. So there's no ferrite in here. Uh, maybe anything up to 0.6% or something like that. But generally, we, we say the super austenitic, there's no ferrite. You can see the difference immediately that the size of the grains is very, very, very much bigger than 
the ferrite or the or the austenitic. So the big grains uh, mean that there's very much less grain boundary. Grain boundaries are what prevent uh, a metal from cracking. The, the grain boundaries, they lock together, uh, the, the, they'll increase the strength and they make it much uh, less sensitive to cracking. So with a super austenitic, it's got massive grain sizes with not a lot of grain boundary area. All it wants to do is crack. Um, a closer look at uh, a super austenitic, it's the same picture, just blown up a little more. So we're talking about a grade like a, a 383, which would be an exciton 27314 LCU. That means it's got 27% chrome, 31% nickel and former molybdenum, low carbon with copper, an addition of copper. So generally, uh, typical compositions of the super austenitics, they're, they're generally more than 20% chrome and then have varying amounts of nickel, varying amounts of molybdenum plus some other alloys. So they're 100% austenite, zero ferrite. Typical grades, others that you may have heard of, 310 LMO, 385, 383. Nickel alloys also come under the title of super austenitics, but nickel alloys were taken as a separate uh, topic, and that's going to be next month's presentation. Okay, but so we're talking about the stainless steels. Okay. So how do you weld them? What's the problem with welding? Well, because of the very large grain size and the lack of ferrite. All they want to do is crack. So centerline cracking or hot cracking is very, very common and very easy to do when you're welding uh, super austenitics. The, the actual mechanism of cracking is, is that the, the weld pool, as it's solidifying, doesn't have the strength to hold uh, the weld together. It doesn't have the strength uh, to, to hold the sides in. So the thermal stresses caused by the shrinkage of the, the molten uh, pool cooling down. If there's not enough strength there, then it rips apart. So uh, the, the most annoying thing is that you can look like you've done a fantastic weld, a beautiful weld, it looks very nice. Uh, and then as it's cooling down, crack, okay? So the, the large grain sizes are a very big uh, contributor to uh, the hot cracking. But also any kind of impurities in the metal, so impurities that may come from the base metal, may even come from some, um, some poor filler metals. If you get impurities like sulfur or phosphorus, then these, are, uh, th these cause the melting point of the, 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 the surrounding alloy to lower basically. So you've got areas with lower melting points. What happens in a austenitic uh, stainless steel is that the ferrite basically absorbs, it absorbs the sulfur and the phosphorus, so it doesn't have the same effect. Um, the, the, the ferrite grabs hold of these impurities and it, 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 it takes it away. It takes those problems away, basically. Obviously, the super austenitic doesn't have that luxury. It doesn't have any ferrite in it. So uh you have to be very aware of what you're doing and it starts off uh before you even start welding it starts off with the design and uh, again this is a, a fairly typical drawing um slide that we see whenever we talk about welding stainless steels the problem being that the more alloys that you put into a, a stainless steel so and if you remember uh the example that we saw got 27 percent chrome with 31 percent nickel the more chrome and nickel uh, that you add to a, a filler metal the less fluid the weld pool so rather than being a nice flowing uh, molten metal that flows everywhere what you've got is is something more resembling chewing gum so uh, the, the the problem is that that chewing gum doesn't want to flow into narrow cracks so in the weld design, the welding engineer should design the fit up and the, uh, the, the angle and the uh, root gap 
to be bigger. The root gap needs to be wider. Uh, the angle needs to be uh, more open, a wider angle. OK, this will allow this this chewing gum to flow into the root. If it doesn't, then obviously you've got areas with with lack of penetration, lack of root penetration. Uh, it, it's a bad weld. Plus, it, it's tricky for the welder to do. OK, so you have to help him out um, and compensate for the lack of fluidity in the weld pool by opening these things up. So that's before you even start. So. Uh, we obviously recommend you use high pure, high purity filler metals and keep everything clean. Keeping everything clean goes without saying for welding. It's more important with stainless and it's even more important with super austenitics. Any introduction of dirt, um, even a, a paint stick uh, into the weld, uh, paint, surface, oxides, whatever, uh, you, you just rubbed it down with a, a dirty cloth, whatever. Introduction of chlorides and oxides and, and uh, impurities into the weld will cause big problems. There's no compensation in there with the ferrite. There's the, the, the ferrite's not gonna, not gonna help you because it's not there, okay? Also, use a convex weld bead rather than concave. The idea being that there's enough metal here. In a convex weld, there's a buildup of metal to actually uh, compensate for any lack of strength. So there's enough metal in there to hold the weld together. If you're using a flat, uh, a very flat or a concave uh, weld bead, then th there's not enough metal there. Uh, and you, you, you're reducing your chances of this thing being able to hold together. Um, aligned with, with keeping stresses low is the weld sequence. So make sure you plan that carefully to not put too much heat, too much stress, too much thermal shock into one area, that will cause problems. As I say, you need to be very gentle, heating up and cooling down these alloys, okay? Always use matching filler metal, yeah, as a recommendation. Uh, something to do with the control of heat is stringer beads, so no weaving. If you're weaving, then you're increasing the, the heat input in a particular area, so, we would recommend do uh, stringer beads only. Avoid dwell time. Backfill your craters. You can't have any holes. If you have a hole, there really won't be any strength there to hold it together and you need all the help you can get. Um, obviously, if you have to weave it vertically up. So no preheats, no post weld heat treatments, low heat input, typically uh, at one kilojoule or below, if possible with an interpass temperature of 150. Obviously, you don't want to heat it up too much um, and you don't want to keep heating it up too much for all, all the reasons we, uh, we we specified. And along with, with reducing the heat and uh, stringer beads, is use a smaller diameter filler wire to make two passes rather than a single pass with a large diameter. That will reduce the heat, okay? It does nothing for your productivity, but uh, neither does a crack. OK, so we're trying to do everything to avoid cracking. Always grind end craters, no striking marks. Again, these are these are sources of stress. These are where cracks are going to start. OK, and for, for every stainless, really, we, we would always recommend post well cleaning, uh, pickling and pacifying uh, the weld. Uh, that will restore the chrome oxide layer and it gives you the best chance, basically the best chance of, of, of corrosion resistance. So in terms of the portfolio, um, we're talking just about the Exoton portfolio here. Um, and one thing to mention, uh, we, we have to mention Sandvik. Um, as you may have seen on the introduction slide, Sandvik, uh, Sandvik welding was bought by ESAB uh, in 2018. Uh, so the whole of the Sandvik portfolio is marketed under this brand name Exiton. So the Exiton products are the Sandvik products made with Sandvik steel. Uh, Sandvik are still number one in the world for manufacturing, uh, distributing uh, tubes, stainless nickel alloy tubes for uh, the high corrosion applications. So the metallurgists, the clever metallurgists in Sweden at Sandvik developed some uh, very special grades 
and manufacture their own grades of tubes. And then the development of the filler metals was on the back of that. So these filler metals were developed to absolutely match the accompanying tube grade. So uh, if anyone's welding sandvik tubes, then they should be using exciton uh, filler metals. Sandvik don't market filler metals anymore. They, uh, the, if you look on their website, they recommend the exciton. So this list here that I've got, I'm uh, uh, counting nickel uh, separately. As I said, that's the subject of next month's uh, topic. Um, I've, I've illustrated here, we've got the superostinitic grades. These are the ones with zero ferrite. These are not superostinitic, but they're very special. Um, they're quite highly alloyed and they need to be treated the same as superostinitic. So in terms of weldability, then these are for very corrosive environments and they need to be treated the same. So um, here we've got a list of the, the Sandvik uh, tube grades and then the corresponding filler metals. So um, I'll take a, a, a little time to go through um, six of these grades, basically, just to give you a little um, idea of the applications that they're used for. So the first one is a 385 stainless steel. So it's Exiton 2025 5 LCU, mainly used for acetic and sulfuric acid. This is a sulfuric acid plant. So this is the type of um, um, factory plant uh, process uh, center, whatever you want to call it. It's the type of place that uh, people that manufacture stainless steel love. OK, so what have you got? Everything's made of stainless steel. Uh, you've got uh, about everything bad in there that could possibly be. You've got temperatures and you've got uh, corrosive media and you could be talking very strong sulfuric acids. Uh, PVC as well uh, would be another application for this. So as I said, I can um, quite happily uh, let you have copies of this presentation. So uh, please don't think about making notes. What we're just trying to illustrate, what I'm just trying to illustrate really, is that we've got the sandwich tube grade, we've got the corresponding wire grade, and then the properties of all weld metal. In terms of mechanical properties, again, we've got the mechanical properties of the tube and the cap mechanical properties of the all weld metal. So as you can see, um, that the weld metal is usually better stronger than the base metal. In terms of corrosion resistance, um, what we've got here are corrosion diagrams, basically. So we've got um, sulfuric acid up to 100% uh, strength of sulfuric acid at temperatures, and it's got a corrosion curve. So th this is uh, the point that it will corrode at 0.1 millimeters a year. So if you compare it, uh, not to look at in, in too much detail, but just compare it with a 316 stainless, for example. That hardly lasts anything, any time and for any amount of temperature. So these are the ones that we're looking at, 2RK65, for example, in this instance. The, the next one is a 310 LMO. Uh, the reason that it's in speech marks is that be, it, be, according to AWS, it's not exactly a 310 LMO because it's not possible to manufacture exactly a 310 LMO. So we're allowed uh, as does anyone else that manufactures it, to put these speech marks around it. So it means it's close. It's almost a 310 LMO. But that's what it's recognised in the market anyway. So it's Exiton 2522 2LMN. That's, that's 25 chrome, 22 nickel, 2 molybdenum with, uh, with manganese. So again, this is uh, ammonium carbamate production. So ammonium carbamate is urea, so fertilisers, chemical fertilisers. Uh, and again, this is an ammonium carbamate uh, facility. What can you see? Lots of stainless steel, lots of heat. Fantastic. It's exactly what we like to see. Uh, using the same format, we've got the tube grade, which is called Sandvik 2RE69, uh, with the corresponding wire, all weld metal, and the mechanical properties. Okay. This one we're calling it full austenitic. It's got 0.6%, but we would still call it a super austenitic. And again, uh, we've got a, a, an ISO corrosion diagram for the 2RE69. Um, again, not to worry about it too much, but compare it with the 304L, for example. Uh, it's very, very much better. 
Next one, 27314 LCU, so it's a 383. We mentioned this one before, 27 chrome, 31 nickel for molybdenum, low carbon and with copper. Again, this is excellent uh, corrosion resistance for phosphoric and sulfuric acid, and it's used a lot in heat exchangers and piping, basically piping of sour gas, uh, chloride bearing seawater. Uh, it was developed for welding this grade called Sanicro 28. And it's also excellent for welding alloy 825, nickel iron chrome one. That's the reason that this was developed. So in the same format, we've got the same information. OK, obviously the weld metal is better than the base material. Uh, and this is a particular good alloy. Um, you can see on this diagram, we've got contaminated phosphoric acid up to uh, 800 parts per million. And you can see things like alloy 825 lasts a very short amount of time. The Sanicro 28 doesn't start to corrode uh, until you get over 700 parts per million. Amazing. And again, the corrosion rate uh, at different temperatures in again contaminated phosphoric acid you can see the corrosion rate is very very low all the way through right up to 120 degrees compared with uh, a 904l alloy 825 it's a fantastic alloy and again this table um, is for the same grade sanico 28 in 200 degrees uh, centigrade 95 percent super phosphoric acid uh, the corrosion rate after 200 days. So um, again, the the corrosion rate of this Sanicro 28 is is uh, less than 10% of alloy G, for example. So just trying to illustrate how good it is. So the Exoton XS, SX um, is a, a matching filler metal for Sandvik SX. This is not a super austenitic, but it does need to be treated exactly the same way. Uh, in terms of its ability to to crack. Um, again, con concentrated sulfuric acid manufacture. It's the best thing on the market. Um, sulfuric acid goes to make phosphoric acid that goes to make uh, urea fertilizers. 60% of the sulfuric acid produced in the world goes to manufacture fertilizers. OK, and again, this is a sulfuric acid plant. Lots of stainless, lots of heat, um, uh, exactly what we like to see. So again, the same format, it's better. That's what we're trying to show. And again, uh, we've got a fantastic corrosion curve here, ISO corrosion curve, comparing it to 316 or uh, alloy C, there's no corrosion. Uh, and this is in uh, sulfuric acid, 98%. Fantastic. 2212 HT is uh, for high temperature. So this it was made to match Sandvix 253 MA. OK, so this has got excellent stability up to 1150 degrees C, which is high for, for, for a stainless steel. OK, uh, this is a styrene reactor, so it's not in place, but it's uh, it's just been manufactured. So big pieces of kit. Lots of stainless steel. We love them. OK. And same format, the mechanical properties superior. And again, uh, oxidation. So this is uh, 15 minutes at the high temperature and then five minutes at room temperature. So you're trying to make it corrode, basically. So compared to a, a 309, 310, you can see the 253 MA uh, doesn't, doesn't want to, basically. It's an excellent alloy. And the last one, um, in case anybody uh, has fallen asleep, 2520L. So this is, is almost a 310. OK, it's what we would call a 310, not LMO. It's just 310. 25 chrome, 20 nickel, low carbon for nitric acid. This is a nitric acid plant. Uh, so the, the properties of it is that it's good for intergranular corrosion. It's used in um, acrylic fibres, ammonium nitrates, again, fertilisers again. And it's to match the, the Sandvik 2RE10 grade. Excellent mechanical properties. And again, we've got a corrosion rate um, in 
Um, <coughs> sorry, I don't know what the media is in that one, sorry. Um, but this is after sensitization. So after um, the the metal's been been sensitized, so it's been uh, basically the corrosion has been accelerated. And you can see that the two RE10 is not moving. Uh, it's not bothered. So the, the super austenitics and those special grades that I showed you, they're used for the, the harshest uh, environments on the planet. So concentrated sulfuric acid, concentrated phosphoric acid. That's what these are used for. And you have to be very, very careful with, uh, with how you weld them. They want to crack. So thanks very much for, for listening to me for the past 25 minutes or so. I, uh, I hope uh, you've been able to glean something useful. Please take note of my contact details, mine or Clemente's. We're more than happy to uh, answer any questions via email later on. More than happy to supply you with a copy of this presentation.